Hello and welcome to Warfall United WFC. Hello and welcome to All for United with me, John Foster, MUFC. Happy New Year, January the 1st. Happy birthday to Natalie as well, who's actually out of the country at the moment. I completely forgot. Uh, it was always a good job. I, I remember that at the start of the show. So um, Natalie's up enjoying her birthday. I won't give her age away, but uh, it's a big one. So uh, if you haven't uh, got her on Twitter or message on Twitter, please do. Um, look, this is the uh, first day of the year. We want to start off positive and we've got three... Massive Mark Skinner fans here who want to talk about tactics, who want to talk about mm-hmm. his formations, about what he's like in front of the camera. And we hear a lot of, we can always talk about the negatives because until we win trebles, then there's always going to be something to improve on. But we want to talk we want to talk a bit about what we believe he's trying to do, how he's going about doing that. You know, there is mm-hmm. a bit of frustration in the fan base because he might not be doing it as quickly. Uh, as we'd like or the way we'd like but I genuinely think that he is doing something um, and I can see that and I think um, in the last three games we've seen that based on results you know won three games conceded none scored nine and I think there's um, people in the fan base who are kind of like in two minds at the moment you've got some fans who don't really care what he does so long as he gets the results and then you've got other fans who may not understand what he's trying to do you know I think it's very it's very different to what we're used to as United fans, and also the way we play is not really. It's not really a way that England fans enjoy enjoy watching us play because we're very possessional based at the moment, and a lot of fans like a lot more quickness to the game. So, lots of stuff to get into. Um, it is the first day of the uh, new year. So, Connor, how are you doing, mate? You okay? Yeah, all good. Looking uh, looking forward to talking women's football again because the men are letting me down big time. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, looking forward to this. Uh, I've got quite a bit to say, as you know. I've been a big uh, Skinner supporter, I guess, if you can call it that. I don't quite know what... what just I, I just see it differently to, to, to the way others do, and there's no right or wrong way of supporting him. But, yeah, I think yeah, I've got a fair bit to, to talk on Skinner, I think. Yeah, um, Matt's got a bit of an internet connection problem, so we'll be in and out. Um but yeah, we'll, we'll make a start on it. Well, let's, let's have a look first. Can we get Matt back? There we go. That's it. Welcome back, Matt. Uh, how are you doing, <laughs> Matt? You okay? Yeah, not too bad, pal. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. So yeah, we, we just want to kind of get into it, really. I've kind of just introduced it there about, you know, I want to talk a little bit about his philosophy and the formations he, ch- he chooses, what we might see in the future as well. I'll put a little tweet out about how he may go even further forward. I think I could talk about this forever. I don't need, I don't need you, Pam. I could just talk all day. And I do very often to myself. I just find myself just talking to myself about this subject. It's a very complex way of playing. It's probably pl- ways of playing that some of our players have never played before. Um, and I think he's doing it step by step. I think there's, um, we can go even more advanced if we wanted to in this style of play. But I think at the moment, we've kind of just kind of mastering what we have done in, in the past few games. So I think, you know, obviously we're happy with that. And we're going to get into a lot of detail about this. So, Connor, we'll start off with yourself then. Let's talk about his philosophy first. What do you think, when he's playing a game of football, what do you think he likes to see on the pitch? What do you think, you know, he's trying to get out of uh, attacking-wise at least? How he goes about attacking? Um, It's interesting, isn't it? Because his philosophy, I, I actually think he's been adaptable in games. The way we played against Leicester, we tried to play it over the top and the long ball was the option. We tried with wits. I know people might disagree. We we actually have had wits in most of the games this season. The problem is getting there. So we actually have played wingers to an extent. It's just that we don't move the ball quick enough. Now, Skinner's addressed this in interviews. And more, I know it rubs people up the wrong way, but he has come out and said multiple times the way he wants to play. He wants to, the ball to be quicker. He wants everyone to be sharper and aggressive and you know that grit that he talks about all the time. So... In terms of his attacking play, I'm hoping this works. Um, there we go. <laughs> so I've just brought a, a little, uh, yes, I love a that. Little, di- a little diagram in. Because um, essentially, what he, I'm not going to go too much into this because I'm not a tactician manager or, or anything like that. Do we, we have this huge debate, don't we? Inside forwards, 
that let's say that left left mid position is Leah Golson because she predominantly plays on the left hand side. What he's basically asking her to do, and I think there's that clip obviously of Nat and Skinner at the end. Of, I think it was the Everton game when we drew, where he's saying he wants his wingers to come inside to open up the width. It is people might not like it. It is bang on because what that what that then does. Leah, let, I'm, I'm just going to use Leah and Blundell as the examples. Leah comes inside. Then there's that space out on the left-hand side out wide then because the right-back's getting dragged in or does the right-back then follow the wing-back? So you do have a bit of um, yeah. a problem if you're a defender. So that style is very good. I think, I can't remember, it's either Jurgen Klopp or, or Guardiola. It's Guardiola that uses it a hell of a lot for Man City and Klopp does it as well, actually with Trent and Robertson, you know, very high and wide. So it can be done. I just don't think... I've said since day one that Skinner is actually a very, very good tactical manager. I just think it's taken a bit longer. And I still don't think we're there yet. I still think there's a lot of issues that, um, with the the players fully not understanding uh, the system as such. So yes, there are issues with it because I mean, no, no system is is foolproof. You know, there's going to be issues with any system that you play, and you're going to be found out. There's areas to exploit. But in terms of an attacking sense, I I purely put it down to I just don't think the players expected um, that big of a change because they were used to kind of... I hate doing the comparison, but you can kind of compare it to the men's with Ollie, really. Ollie and Ralph. Ollie was very much, just go out there and play. You know what you do. You know, just normal, basic football. And then Ralph's come in and tried to put an actual system in. I, I think that's similar with Casey and Mark. I think Casey was very much right, this is the way we're playing, you know what you can do kind of thing, just go out there and do it. And Skinner's come in and got actually, right, this is the system, I need you to do this and this and this, and I'm trying to overcomplicate it almost. So maybe that's part of it as well, but it's definitely taking time. I w- it, this is going to take full season minimum to get to get fully yeah, right. right. Yeah, um, I agree with what you said there. I think um, we talk about like the width, oh, we, we can go into that shortly, seeing that uh, a diagram we got there, there's so many little diagrams and passages of play that um, we can get into, and I'm glad that you put that up, I wish uh, I made some as well, I should, I should have done my homework. Um, I think more more than anything, his style of play is to move his, uh, his opponents out of position, and that's why he makes a lot of short, sharp passes, and then when he gets to the final third, that's where you do rely on that bit of creativity, something slightly different where it might be a ball over the top, it might be a Leslie Russo run or an Elatoon run, or it might be a through ball, or it might be something that we are used to seeing, you know, where it's either just a, a, a standard ball into the box. But I think a ball into the box out, out of about 10 crosses that you put in, you're probably only going to get like maybe two shots on target, three shots, you know, you probably win half of it, well, you probably win less than half of those, really. If you're a striker, a number, number nine, You've probably got two centre backs on you. You've probably got to win the ball a third of the time, so that's like three out of ten to actually get that ball on target. You're probably looking at about one out of ten, and then a goal. You're probably looking at about one out of ten. So I think in Skinner's mind, he would like to keep possession and play it. You know, play the ball now. I'll keep it through midfield, um, and then look for the opening. Um, but we have got width. Kind of, I can see that you're trying to come in. I just start no, off with one and, then, and, then, and then jump in. We have got width, um, but it's not for crosses. It's purely to keep full backs occupied to allow that space. And then as, as soon as there is space behind, you can put the ball in for Galton to run into. Does that kind of make sense? Um, so we do use width. And very often when the when the players who are out wide actually get the possession of the ball, they will run inside with it. They won't run up to the touch line. They might even be actually at a right angle. And that brings you into that false nine position. So when I talk about false nine, I could, I could, I could, I could go on kind of... But when we talk about this false nine position, it doesn't actually be need to be the number nine who's actually in that position that can rotate. So you can pick up the ball. Leah Galton could pick up the ball on left wing, run uh, like kind of parallel to the 18-yard box and still find herself in the exact same position as a false nine would be with the ball and then go from there as well. So it, very often we'll see the wingers, yeah, they'll, they'll pick up the ball, but then they'll kind of cut in and not even go towards the goal purely just to make the whole, the whole idea is to move the centre backs and full backs out of position to draw them out and then as soon as they do that I think someone can make the run. Um I'll let you guys talk. Um uh, Connie you jump in and then I'll just check with Matt behind the scene to see if his camera's okay. <laughs> yeah no I, the only thing I was going to add is if you want to see Skinner's 
kind of way of or not every goal is going to be the same. But I think if you want to see his kind of ideal goal and in, in what, how he wants to play, go and watch both of the goals against Birmingham. It's very yeah. much Golson coming inside or Hanson, whoever. No, it was Staniforth, I think it was. The fullback getting to the byline. And yes, I've said, this, I've said this to Andy <laughs> I've said this to Andy I've said the exact same thing. Carry on, Sammy. Yeah, it's the fullbacks overlapping, getting to the yeah. byline, pulling it back. Go and watch Man City men's. They score, they score about 90 goals a season, right? All of their goals pretty much are tap-ins, which is fine because, I mean, ultimately they're scoring loads of goals. But it all, all comes from the fullbacks going around the outside because the wingers have, come, wingers have come inside. So there's so much space out wide. There's nothing worse. Now, trust me, I, I've played anyone who's played along the back line in football will tell you. There's nothing worse than that ball between the centre-back and the right-back or the left-back, whichever side. Just being... Because as a fullback, you're like, do I track the runner that's just gone past me or do I follow... I'm going to use Leah and Blundell as an example again. So if you've got both of them running out, your Leah's gone that way, <laughs> Hannah's going that way. You're like, well, which one am I following? So that's that's where this system is effective. So I said those two goals against Birmingham are exactly exactly what Skinner wants to do. I think. And that was the time where we started talking talking about invading the space behind. Them. So as soon as they said that, that's when I started to look at okay, what's going on about here? And that's when I started to get into it. And you're absolutely right. Those are the balls and. If you notice, those passes were made before the fullback even got into those positions. The fullbacks run onto the ball, and that's the whole point. And, and when we get that chemistry up front, where Barisa, Jackie, Stanley Force, whoever it is, plays a ball into the into an area where there's not even a player, and the player runs onto it, that's that's when you know that it's good because you can't you're not marking anyone. No one needs to be there because there's no one actually there to mark. The, the player is running onto it, and I think that's brilliant. Matt, um, I'll be cameras okay. We've talked a bit about his philosophy. And his attacking style. What 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 do you think on his his philosophy and the way he's uh, approaching games? I mean, at first I wasn't sort of understanding what he wanted. I mean, I could see the way he set up. That was plain and clear. But it seemed to be sort of that patchy and hit and miss for me. I think it was a little bit like, what are we trying to achieve here? And obviously, you know, when we was bringing Alessia back slowly, obviously we needed to change for that. I get that. My for Thomas has been never fit. So I think, again, it's been juggling. But I think the thing is for me is that you've got to know what plan A is. And then if plan A isn't possible, you've got to adapt to plan B. And I think we've only just worked out plan A now. I think we've seen by shifting how we play to sort of this five in midfield, that's now plan A for me, or it should be plan A. Um, so hopefully we stick with that. It's working at the minute. The only criticism I don't like with it is the one up front. And I've always hated a lone striker as it is, but I think, as long as you get the support from that player that's in behind, which at the minute looks like Tooney, then it's it's not too bad. Um, and those sort of those players that I want to say wide, but they're not really wide. Um, you know, as long as they get up and support. Obviously, we've seen Stanny there at one point. Not a huge fan of that, but I can see why he sort of wants it to be like all central midfielders from looking at it the outside in. But I think you know we've we've got a start somewhere haven't we and I think now's the start like we've all talked about it's going to take time and we've all talked about you know sort of adapting and getting who we want in and working that out and I think now he's, he's sort of halfway there I think as well the reason the, the reason why Toon and Staniforth kind of work is because they're very good well Toon less so much just because she's a creator so she's trying the the, 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 the danger ball I guess you could call it that she tries it a bit more but they're both very good at ball retention they're both very good at keeping hold of it. So they probably work better as those inside forwards because you're not running at players. You're not expected to beat your, beat the fullback yeah. on the outside. Like, say, Leah and Hanson would. They pick the ball up. They'll drive. Russo is very much the same, actually. They'll drive at defenders. Toon and Staniforth are not really that. So maybe he likes them. In the, I don't think that's a long-term solution. Two maybe on the left. And then you put Hanson on the right or Russo on the right and then somebody down the middle because it... You know, we've spoken over the last few weeks that, for me personally, Russo's not a striker. I'd rather her out on the right and running at defenders. You can can you imagine that Russo running at the fullback and on a going around the on the overlap? You wouldn't know who to go to. That would be brilliant. And then you've got an actual striker in the middle. That would be brilliant. So I think that's why this has worked because we've got Barisa is exceptional on the ball. Lad is exceptional on the ball. Zellum is very good on the ball, contrary to what people will tell you. <laughs> um, and then you've got Toon, who's obviously very good on the ball. You add Jackie into that as well. You've got five players there that are very, very good at keeping hold of the ball. And as we've said before, Skinner does like this kind of safe football, especially in the midfield. I think 
funnily enough, in the first two games, I don't think we were very safe with the ball. I think since that battering from Chelsea, it's brought him down a little bit. And now he's like, right, let's protect this a bit. He, I don't think he, not, he wants another... Well, who he's not going to, is he? But I think ever since then, we've started keeping the ball a bit more rather than trying that danger pack. We've tried it a bit more recently, but the few games after Chelsea, we reverted back a little bit. I think that really did... Because everything was positive before that. When obviously you got, you know, went up to to Rangers, and you know he was talking about the fan connections and all this kind of thing. We'd won the first game, beat Leicester, and then we got absolutely battered by Chelsea, and it was like massive sink back down to yeah. back down to earth. So on that on that beating against Chelsea, it's like we're trying to run before we could walk. We were trying to play Skinner style, in my opinion, but we just wasn't good enough at it. And arguably, we're still not good enough at it now. I guess time will tell. But you are right there, Connor. But I, I want to talk about this one up front. The Matt was on a bed. I just want to keep keep on this. Um, Matt, hopefully you can still hear me with your camera. What, yeah, go on, keep going. Yeah. So I, I don't think we'll ever change like one up front as such. But it seems like that what we have seen more of now is more of the midfielders getting involved in the attack. Is that is that kind of like what you've seen in the last three games? Because something's different and something's working. I appreciate we were against maybe slightly weaker opposition, but there weren't easy games as such. Um, especially with our current form, you know, going into that. What have you kind of seen different um, that's kind of going to work? I yeah, I, mean. I think, like you said, sort of players in and around the forward, I think, especially behind, like I said before, Tooney behind, um, you know. No, still got you. Tooney in behind, um, you know, is is massive because that's your link up. I think the other thing is as well is that the ones that are sort of deemed so-called wide um, are getting in and around as well. And it's becoming sort of a narrow to support the forward. So I think that that in itself is a lot better. Um, but I think it, it's just, again, not isolating the forward. Like the thing that annoys me still at the minute is when we press, it's Alessia and nobody else. There's nobody in behind. And I think yeah. what we need is we need somebody where they're going to be in and around as a second press because at the minute it's far too easy to just, you know, close the ball and then get beat and then there's nobody else there. So I think for me, if we can get sort of, like I say, if there's somebody in behind or two of the players that are on the sort of outside of the five involved, then great. Um, but that that's going to be, for me, how we sort of need to um, need to address it, really, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I agree with the Russo thing out wide, um, if we use it correctly. So we, we, we want to put it out wide so she can drive at, at, at players. I get that. That's absolutely fine. And then I think that would open up space for a centre-forward to come in. And we'd all we'd all turn around and say, yeah, we want the best centre-forward. We're going into January. We're talking about Black City, as we have done for six months. My slight kind of concern here is, it doesn't matter how good that centre-forward is, she may not get the kind of chances that we're kind of hoping they should get because she may not have the ball in the penalty box as easy as we're kind of thinking that she will. So I want to I wanted just try and throw something else out there. I, I've talked about the false nine. The first two games uh, we played, false, uh, played two near false nine. And I don't think that was meant to happen. I think it was purely because Russo and Thomas was out. Is that a way of making it work? When I'll, I'll keep I'll keep Matt on this one. Matt was on about a lone striker. It is so bad that if if uh, a striker gets involved in the mm. midfield, in between the midfield and the defence, and then you rely on the two wingers, i.e. Russo and Galton, or Russo and one other, and they become almost like not a front two as such, but they're the ones who's going to get the chances on goal more because they're the ones that's making the runs in behind. So if you put, for example, Matt, you put Russo out wide, she's your striker, and she's not necessarily an actual number nine, she'd still be the one that's ended up getting the chances, but she's not necessarily playing as a centre forward, she's playing as an inverted winger. <laughs> it can't be that much of a delay. I think we've lost him. <laughs> yeah, this is far too long. 
okay kind of do you want to kind of <laughs> answer that kind of thought thought process about having his best strikers um as an inverted nine just realized i'm muting myself um yeah um, so your question was about i see what you mean one. but i just don't like it i just think f for me if you've got a say again keep talking Matt. keep talking Someone sort this man out with some new internet. <laughs> okay, I've, I've, I've took you back. It'll come back in shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, so can you, can you kind of see my thought process there? I know no one likes it, this, that, and that, but that's because it's not the English way, is it? It's not an English way. Um, but it's a way. You know, you could quite easily play two as your centre forward, get over involved. You are very right. It's, it's like a diamond formation, correct? But um, it's not actually going to be a diamond formation because the whole idea is for to, to bring a centre back out create a bit of space which is what i was saying at the start of the show about moving people at a position and then um you know you get that get that space behind which uh, skinner talks about yeah i mean it it can still be a diamond the, the, the false nine and a diamond is very similar in terms of it, it depends how narrow you want it to be because you can play a diamond but a very wide diamond if that makes sense so mm -hmm. you can have let's say ladders your six you'd have just on players that are fit now you'd have say Zellerman, Barisa as your two eights two and as your ten and that's I actually suggested Leah and um Russo as your front two because two plays so high up anyway Bo Reese has been playing as the ten in the last few games Russo's been out wide so Russo play Russo, I'm getting my names mixed up here. Toon's been playing further high, higher up because of where Boris has been playing. It's kind of pushed Ella about 10 yards further forward. The, now, the whole team has shifted 10 yards further forward anyway just because of Vlad coming back in. But what that does, you're, you're very right. If if Ella's playing there, it does bring a centre-back with her because she's such a good... This is what good players do. They attract defenders anyway. So yeah. she'll naturally pull a defender away. And then, yeah, you're right. If you have, let's say, Leah and Russo running in behind that can work so yeah it, it it's an option i think that's the good thing with having a stack midfield because you can go with so many op so many different ways we're playing you know four three three four four two four four two three one and four one two one two narrow and all this kind of thing there's there's so many different options it, but they're all ultimately very similar right this, this is where i want to come in here then so you're right formations it is it is all similar i don't Look at oh god, I've, I've, I've changed so much as a person since Skinner's got involved. I don't even look at formations anymore because ever since Skinner mentioned zone 14 or zone whatever zone he mentions, zone 17 probably. I can't even remember. I'm looking more at zones than I am formations. It's about players being in the right position at the right time and people moving together. So when you look at all these zones and, and the rules about playing in zones, about always having an available pass on, about bringing players out of position, you're constantly moving around. You know, it doesn't really matter what formation you're in. It's about always having a pass on. And, and if you're in a certain zone, you will always have a pass on. Um, and, you, and you can see that as they shift across the pitch, they're all moving with them. And I know some of it's probably very basic you know like something that you probably learn you know as a, as a very basic coach in the first couple of levels of the fa or whatever it's called these days the coaching guides or whatever but then i also think that this is getting very complex as well about like you know you, you're only there to have like two in a vertical line and three in a horizontal line so you've always got triangles there and i think i think it's great if you master it but i do think the, the problem that we've got at the moment is they're, over, they're not overthinking it, they're thinking it, which is causing them to play slowly. And so when we start, when as a fan base, we say, oh, I hate this, it's too slow, it's too slow, speed up. I always think that they're playing slow because they're thinking about it too much and it's not coming to, it's not, it's not coming natural to them. When it does come natural to them and they know exactly where everyone's going to be, you're going to start seeing the more one-touch passing and the flicks and all this kind of stuff. And the, everyone knows where it, everyone's going to be. So at the moment... It feels like I don't even know where I'm supposed to be yet, let, let, let alone where my future pass is going to be. And I think this is where it is coming forward. Do so you kind of just want to touch on like that kind of play, Connor? And then I'm going to see what Matt 
um, have to say about it. Yeah, I mean, it, you're taught, anyone who's, who's been involved in any football from any age, you're taught from, like, you know, right from when you start that your movement off the ball is more important than your movement on it because the only way to create space is movement off the ball. You need runners and you need people. This is what Barisa's has really added to this side, by the way. The fact she can drop into little spaces and take players with her. Ella does it very well as well. She drops into spaces and brings players out of position. That's what you want, but it needs to be a collective. Matt mentioned earlier about Russo pressing on her own. You can't have one person pressing. It's, it, you're wasting energy because Russo will press on her own. She just chip it over the top of her, and then she's out of position. She's 20 yards yeah. away from anyone else, and she's just wasted energy with that sprint that she's just done. So, yeah, it, it needs to be... A team effort, but I, I, I fully agree with what you're saying. I think as fans, we want everyone to press all the time, and we want everyone to to, to get the, the get the system. But it's not as easy as that. When you're on the pitch, we see it differently. We're higher up, you know, where we we're obviously at LSV at different other grounds, it's slightly different. But we're on the side of the pitch. When you're there in the center of the pit, midfield especially, when you're there in the center and you're looking around, you don't see everything like we do because we're on the side. We can see the whole. But when you're there. You've got to have eyes everywhere to know that your certain zones, if you want to call it that, and you know your certain space, and that's where it comes back to intelligence. You know that we talk about a lot with player intelligence. You've got to know it's not really something you can fully teach, or if you you could probably teach it, but it's going to take a long time to understand. Unless you've been taught it for a while, you can't just pick it up in two games. And it's what I go. It goes back to what I said at the start. I don't think we've fully mastered this yet. We've won a few, which is great. But I still don't think we're there yet. I still think the players are still a little bit confused. You can see it. Saw it against Villa. You know, we battered them 5-0. and It was very comfortable. But there were times where players would pick the ball up and go, they'd want to make a run. But then at the same time, they're thinking about it, going, well, if I do that, am I leaving space there? Or am I, are we all going? Or like, you'll see like Russo go to press and then look behind and go, oh, actually, no, they're, they're not coming with me. So, mm. yeah, it, it's... It's difficult for a player because it's completely different to what they've had before. So I do empathise with them. But at the same time, if this I've said this since day one, if this is how Skinner wants to play, he's got to stick with it. He's yeah. going to have to stick with this and drill it into them in training every single time. Well, this is, you've mentioned a couple of things there. The Villa game, if you have to look back at some of those, the, the, the Villa game itself, um, a lot of the goals came by Villa mistakes. Uh, and I'm not knocking our performance because we force them into their mistakes but we kind of put ourselves in positions there where we could kind of capitalize and you, you talked about the press there so let, let's talk a bit about that we talk about that um, and we saw this on the first couple of three games we don't press as much as we may have done or we, or we may want them to there's a time and a place about pressing isn't, isn't there and you know when the ball goes back to the goalkeeper and they've got the, and the goalkeeper's got the two center backs there and you've got one low striker running about 10 yards to the goalkeeper the goalkeeper's got plenty of time to pick either pass and you're kind of wasting energy and yeah you can turn around and say yeah everyone should press together but there is a time time and a place to uh, to press and for me it's more about when the when almost when you're catching them off guard when you're catching the, the opposed uh, opposition off, off guard so when they've just kind of won the ball back everyone press, pressure them or if um a defender's kind of got the back to like the opponent, if they've turned the wrong way, everyone kind of press them then. I think there's ways and means to press. And I think it, it worked quite well against Villa. I, I, I think the press worked more well against Villa um, because we did, they didn't know how to kind of cope with that. Um, but I know you feel quite strongly about when, when to press and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it, it, look, we'd love to be able to chase it down and, and the, fan, the fans cheer and we, we, want, we want to win the ball back and we want the goalkeepers to make mistakes and some of, the, some of the players that we play against, we will force them into making mistakes by pressing, but you've also got to balance it out about not leaving yourself open as well. We tried to press Chelsea. We just got ripped apart. We tried to yeah. play from the back against Chelsea. We got ripped apart. You know, there's times in a play, you know, and I don't think we're ready to be that kind of team just yet. Do you want no. to talk a bit more about pressing? No, 100%. The, 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 the art of pressing, now, like, like you just said there, we all want every team to press at 100 mile an hour. Go and look at how Leeds men are doing. You know, They press at 100 mile an hour. They press every single team. And now look at them. They're completely burnt out. And they've done this for years. Yep. It, you cannot press all the time. And you certainly don't press the goalkeeper on, on your own. That's just a complete waste of time. The best way to press is, full enough, is what we did against Villa, where 
we pressed as a three and four unit. What you, what you want the idea of pressing is you want to force either them into mistakes or obviously win the ball back. The, the idea, let's say the ball goes up to their fullback, you want three players going with them. You want one mark watching the centre back, you want one going to the player and you want one going to the winger. Because then you're you, you want to box them in. That's the whole point. If you're going as a one player, let's say Russo chases her down, she's going to pass it to the centre back, then Russo's going to chase her, goes to the other centre back, then Ella might go. But that's just a waste of energy. You're never going to get it unless they make a real bad mistake, which can happen. It, it's a complete waste of time. So until we master this kind of pressing as a four, let's say a four, because you want Russo going you want, let's say it's on the right-hand side, you want Zellum going as well into the midfield, you want Honor going up, and then you want either Stanif or somebody like that going as well. Then you start boxing teams in. But this whole idea of pressing all the time, every t- I was really happy we didn't press Arsenal because I thought if we'd have gone toe-to-toe with them and really pressed them, we'd have got exactly like Chelsea. You don't do that against these teams. The teams that have had success against the top sides have sat back <laughs> and hit, invited them on. And then gone over the top, you know, on the counter attack. But the one more thing I just want to mention about pressing: the reason we press better now is because of Haley Ladd, because we're starting 10, 15 yards higher up, so it's easier to press. You're not using as much energy because we're closer to the back line. Before, because we played so deep, the midfield's got 20 yards to run before they even get to one to the first player. Now they're almost on. Like, look at Borussia against Villa. You had Borussia two and Stanford Russo right on the defense, straight from the off. So we're pressing them. It's just easy to press. So that whole position of a six, that's why it's so important because it, it allows you to start higher up. Said it, you know, since the day when I came on here, your six can drop in between your two centre backs and your full backs can be 20 yeah. yards further up the pitch then. Yeah. So many things about that, what I agree with. I think just to, just, just very quickly on that Aston Villa game with the Barisa uh, and Lad, um, I'm looking at that and um, Balrisa's assist for two in his goal. So Lad passed pass it to Balrisa. Balrisa controlled it perfectly. Passed it to two and he two and he scored. I'm still, I, I, no one's mentioned this, but if you watch that back, I'm sure that that, 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 that pass for Lad, from Lad, should have been for Balrisa to run onto and score herself. But it, it just didn't have enough weight on it. And Balrisa ended up controlling it, finding two and he, brilliant goal. Um, yeah, and something else he mentioned there about was Pressy when. Um, the ball goes to the fullback. I think this is something else where people say, why don't we play with wingers? Why don't we go wide? When we attack and go, when we're attacking and we get the ball out wide, if you have a look at where you are on the pitch, obviously you've got the touch line going alongside you if you're a winger. That's like out of a 360 kind of circle, 180 degrees of it, like half of your passing space is kind of non-existent because you'll be passing it into touch. So you've only got like, you've got basically half half of your passing angles to kind of uh to, to, to kind of choose from if you know what i mean and obviously you're standing that less chance then of finding that pass so that's just another way of make me thinking okay we've got to stick narrow whether we like it or not because this is his philosophy i was going back to this again when you talk about like pressing the fullbacks it's so hard for the fullbacks to get out but it's also hard for our wingers to start keeping the ball and finding passes because you're cutting off half the angles the passing angles and I'm talking in so much detail here, but these are the kind of things I'm looking at. So these, this is why we don't like to constantly keep going wide because, again, I was talking about crosses into the box, you'll lose the ball, but you can also lose the ball out wide because you've probably only got one pass on and it's more likely that a defender can cut that cross out. Um, we're yeah. about, sorry, go, go on, yeah, go on. No, no, the only thing I was just going to make on that, obviously there's two, there's a flip side to that. The attacking side, yes, I kind of agree. I think that's why I say it to you all the time in grounds, that that's where you want your midfield helping out. The addition of Berisa has helped because she she just is everywhere. Um, you know, she she covers very well. And when your ball goes out to your fullback, you want one of your midfielders. I say it to you every time. Yeah. I, I used to get so frustrated in the first like five games of the season because the midfield, and this is where I think it was more confident, they didn't want the ball. You want somebody to drop and help them. Um and on the flip side, on the on the attacking, when the opposing uh, team have got the ball and you're pressing them, that's why I say you go as a four because when the fullback's got it, you want one person on the player, you want one person on the centre back, someone from midfield, and then your fullback going up, and you've covered all that. And their only option then is back to the keeper or just knock it down the line, just a long ball over the top. Then so that's why you always. I think I, I can't remember the. the I, I think it is the Gagan press that Ralph's trying to do in the in the men's side. You press as a four. That's mm. just what you what you taught, and it's the most effective. So, 
if we're going to continue with this, then we just need to make sure we're doing it at least with three, minimum three players. There's no point pressing with any less than that. Yeah. Um, we're over halfway through the show. If you're new, please hit the subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. Drop a comment afterwards and we'll respond to it where we can. It looks like we've lost Matty's connection, unfortunately, as um, has played upon him tonight, which is um, a massive shame. We've still got plenty more to talk about. Um, we want to talk a bit about Skinner uh, towards the end of the show as well, about like the media side of him. Like, you know, some fans like myself love hearing him talk, some people don't, some fans don't. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that shortly. Let's just talk a little bit kind of about the personnel that we've got uh, and how that could maybe fit into the system. So you you did a cracking show on this channel um, with Phil O'Connor talking about Balwisa. Um, and we haven't seen much of Balwisa just yet. Balwisa's got a lot of fans and I'm really looking forward to seeing Balwisa play. We spoke about with Matt just about like the formation. Does it matter if there's five midfielders? Because if there's five midfielders, then she's probably going to get in. You know, pretty, pretty much, you'd think. Are you thinking a bit like me now, Connor, where it doesn't really matter if you're a winger, where you're used to playing on the pitch. You just want players who can play this type of system. And that also leads into the transfer market as well, getting a player who can play this kind of, this brand of football, because it's not an easy brand of football. An easy brand of football is a goalkeeper kicking to the midfield, the midfielders kick it to the wingers, the wingers cross it in, and a big centre forward gets their head on it. This is a lot more complex. And if we pull it off, brilliant. But is this what you're kind of thinking now, Connor, about the personnel that he's choosing needs to be able to play as kind of brand of football? Yeah, exactly. It, the, and I think that's why it's taken up to this point to even get halfway there. Because um, I said at the start, you know, the player's not fully understanding it. I, I've always stood by, you know, I support Man United. I don't support players in particular. I'll, I'll always support the team and, and, you know, I'll always back players and, and the manager. But... Ultimately, I just whatever the lineup is, it needs to win that game that's in front of us. So, whatever he feels necessary now, whether that's going to be the five in midfield going forward, I don't personally think it it can work to an extent. But I think one of the midfielders has got to drop out. Um, like I said, I I actually think moving forward, it's going to have to be Toon on the the left side of the three, uh, of the, yeah, of the three attackers, Martha Thomas if she can stay fit, or another striker. Yeah. down the middle. Russo moved out wide. Um, and then you've got your three in midfield. Now, obviously, the go-to that everyone would like to see is Lad, Jackie and Zell. Lad, Jackie and Borisa, sorry. <laughs> um, now, personally, I would actually like to see that tried because ultimately, I want to see every system tried to see what it, what works the best. Now, that has the potential to really take off because, both, as we said before, you know, you mentioned the show we did with Phil. Borisa is very, very good. You know, I've watched some clips of it now from before she came to United and she can absolutely control the game. So it is on, um, you know, who can play that system better. And this is what I've said since day one, you know, he's going to have to upset some players and he's it is going to upset some fans. Some players will be leaving that maybe some people don't want to leave and don't want to be dropped out, but it's going to happen because it's a completely different way of playing. We don't, I actually think Hansen can force her way back into this side. And we well, might maybe season, see every season. Sorry, I was just gonna say every season she never deserves to be dropped. It's the fact that there's other more established players than her. So, sorry, Connor. Yeah. No, I was gonna say because she reminds me a little bit more of a, an inside forward than a winger to me. Um, and Hansen's got that pace to to drive at people like Russo. So maybe we'll see Hansen on one side, Russo on another, and a striker. Um, but then that begs the question: you're gonna have to drop Toon back into midfield. You need Lad in there, so there's only one more spot then between Zell and Borisa and Jackie. So you've got to drop one of them. And that, this is where I say that someone's going to miss out. You cannot play every single one of them, which is a good thing because you need a stacked bench as well because ultimately bench players need to win your games. Um, you know, we might... top The top three is going to be decided on a couple of points this season. That player that comes off the bench might only score one goal, but that one goal might win us a game that gets us an extra two points or something. So, mm. you know, that could be, uh, could be the difference. So... Yeah, it's going to upset fans. I'm sure it ups, uh, has upset some fans, obviously, recently with the wingers. Uh, Lear and, and Kirsty obviously haven't been as involved. Um, but it's it's working. And, and maybe, you know, we, we saw it against Villa. I know it was because of COVID. But maybe Lear has to drop back to, to fullback to get some games on that side. 
I'm yeah. not against it because I actually thought she did very well against Villa, a fullback. I know she played there last year as well for you know a couple of couple of occasions, but maybe that's her her slot because she's very good at going on the outside. As Pete, you know, as you saw from last year and, and and previous seasons, maybe that's if that's what she's best at. Maybe she's better at fullback in a Skinner system because she can go on the overlap and get to the byline, cutting it in and use that pace. So maybe that's an option too. Yeah, I think with Golkin and Hansen, it's our plan B. It could be our plan B, and people don't think like we don't know what our plan A is. For me, I'm fully behind what plan A is, and I think what plan I think we have got a plan B, yeah, and it's almost like old school, you know. Get, get the ball and run at defenders, um, especially in the last 30 minutes of the game when defenders are probably a bit tired. So, Galton and Hansen, you know, if Galton starts on the pitch and, and it's a fullback, no, no problem. Or if she's part of a five, no problem. But we can always just change it to back to like, um, like, like we saw in the case where we have got Galton and Hansen who are running at players. And I'm seeing these players and I'm seeing like Fuso who's played so well this season. I want to see more of Fuso and she might adapt to this style of play better than Jackie or Bobby. So just because they're te- they're, their history, it doesn't mean that they're going to adapt to this style of play any better than what maybe Fuso can do or some of the youngsters. Um, but obviously, I'll, I would love to see Jackie and Bobby to play together. Uh, as you said, that, that combination would be, would be great to see. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what our starting level is going to be when everything's actually working properly because it's not working properly yet there's still so much more we can do to uh, and if you, you can get into, into this even more deeper i've put these pictures out on twitter didn't tell you about how we could do things differently and mm-hmm. we can go into a lot more detail but i suppose just to kind of finish off before we start talking about the media side of him is there any other kind of players that you kind of want to see in the second half of the season who can potentially come to fruition in, in this kind of tactic or this t- kind of style of play or what kind of players do you think we should be looking at in the transfer window or what do you kind of see going forward in the next six months? Um, I, I think one, obviously a couple of them we just mentioned, I think I, I'd, I want to see a Jackie Barisa partnership. I want to see if that can work. Obviously there's a flip side to that. It might not work. You know, not every, you know, you go back to Man United men's when we signed Sebastian Veron, you know, that was huge. You know, every so highly, I was you know so excited when he came across and he was awful because he didn't fit the system. You know, we've sold players in the past on the men's side because they didn't fit the system. We sold Van Nistelrooy, funnily enough, because he didn't suit the system that Ferguson wanted to play. Now, he was an exceptional footballer, one of my favourite players of all time. But we sold him because he didn't fit the style that we were playing. So that's what it goes back to, doesn't it? It's all about the style that Skinner wants. Now, that might upset some fans, but that's just where we are now. So things I'd like to see tried, like you said there, Ivana, I'd love to see Fuso get some game time because I think she's brilliant. Lightning quick, and she can play that forward three, whatever you want to call it, role, because she's actually very good on the ball as well. So I'd like to see her give me more game time. Um, like I just mentioned there, I wouldn't mind seeing Leah giving another shot at fullback, actually, um, out on the left-hand side. Give maybe, because um, Honor and Hannah are switching anyway. Um, you never know which side they're <laughs> going to fully. I know Honor's been predominantly more on the right side, but she started on the left on the first few games. So, you know, maybe we'll see more of, of Leah at fullback. Um, but other than that, I think, you know, our midfield, I think there's probably four or five positions in our squad that is nailed on. I think the goalkeeper is certain, probably the back three in Millie, Mannion and Honor. I'm not going to count Hannah because of what I was just saying about Leah and I think Ladd as well. And, and probably uh, Ella, actually. They're the only players I think that are absolutely nailed on are going to start every game. Um, so... Yeah, I don't think there's much more he can try in terms of the transfer window. We just need an out-and-out striker. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now that Bruce is not a striker. That's not to say I don't think she should be starting, because she should. I just mm. don't think it's in that striker role. Like I said, that goal she scored against Spurs is my favourite goal of the season so far, because it's out of nothing, just shrugging defenders off, driving, you know, in that finishing top. So she can do it. Put her out on the right, and let's get an actual predatory number nine who's going to score these tap-ins that hopefully will create <laughs> moving yeah. forward and just just finish it up with this subject then you, you, your last sentence sort of summed it up there that the, the the chances that we create and i think this is where we need to be bold and skinner talks about being aggressive i think this is it i think we can get to a certain point on the field and then we really rely on players to kind of step up and just see what's going on around them. You need a player who can put. You, can, you, need, you need a player, a mid, probably a midfielder or a false nine, who can see where the space is behind, 
and you need a player who can also see the same space and run into it before the defence sees it. And as soon as you can find that player, and it's not just going to be one player, but if Bo Risa or Jackie or Zellum, Stanley Force or Laz, if the best of, out of them five, the best three players who can find that space, that ball over the top or a through ball uh, for someone to run onto, the best three of those at, at five will stay in the team, in my opinion. Because I think that's just where we're lacking a little bit. You know, can can the, can that ball go through behind and then can, can someone else be bold enough to run onto it uh, and know exactly what people are thinking? And I think as soon as I've got that, I think we're going to be laughing. Defence-wise, maybe we need to have a, a separate show on this about where we need to get better defensively and set pieces, things like that. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that one again going forward. But we have seen three clean sheets recently. So, if we, you know, if we do get our set pieces nailed on, then, you know, we, we should be in a better... Um, better position going into the second half of the season. Um, just a few minutes to go. I just want to discuss a little bit about um, Skinner regarding his interviews and his pre-match or post-match press conferences, interviews, whatever. He um, he excites me because I'd much rather hear this than a robot or or a sentence or paragraph that anyone can talk can say. I know there's been things where fans have either got it correct or misinterpreted it as in like kind of um not slagging off the fans but kind of not really appreciating the fans as such where where we start talking about like our opinions and stuff i think that's the one where it's kind of gone a little bit by the ball for me but generally i would much rather hear a manager like this than a manager who says very robotic stuff who doesn't like to be confrontational who doesn't like to get us involved who doesn't like to use any kind of i don't know the words for it but like just just i just like a manager who could talk and be honest and kind of you was with me and i'm glad you're on this show the very first game of the season where we met like a family member of of skinner that person says to me and i know that you was in the pub at the same time i says to this person i love listening to skinner talk He's got so much energy, he's got so much passion. I could just listen to him all day. And she said to me, that's Skinner for you. That That is the way he is. He's genuine. This is just the way he is. And I think at the start, some fans were thinking, oh, he's not really he's faking it. I, I'm not hearing that anymore. I think people genuinely know this is the way he is. Some people like it. Some people don't. I love it. Like I say, I, I can hear him talk. And, you know, some people don't like it. I, I think when you're winning, it helps because you can say what you want. I think when you're losing, you, you know, I can see it being a bit more open for debate. Um, but I would much rather hear this than a robot. Um, Connor, tell me your thoughts on his media style. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I, I've never really read it too much into press conferences and interviews and that kind of thing. I don't think it matters too much because a lot of it is very, like, piece that you know what they're going to say. You know, it, most managers nowadays, you know what they're going to say in terms of if you win or lose, you know, it's going to be, oh, you know. And I, I, I was actually um, getting a little bit annoyed with the same questions to Skinner in the early, in the first few weeks. It was always, you know, the, it was the, it was the same questions every week. And I was a bit like, okay, like, come on, yeah, change it up, ask him something a little bit different, you know. And it, it that's one of the things we noticed that the, the questions started changing a little bit when the results started to turn. Um, no press conferences really annoyed me too much, actually, or a post-match interview, because I actually think he's been right in what he's said. Everything he's said is not actually wrong. Um, I think he's, his comments after Chelsea, I think, were wrong. You know, you, you can't come out and say that, um, you know, about it being only 6-1 or whatever the actual comment was. You know, you, you you're, when you're at Man United, you can't lose 6-1. Even if you're thinking it, you can't go out to public to say, can you? Yeah, no. So I think th that Chelsea one was bad. Like I said earlier in the show, that was a massive crash down to reality. Um, but other than that, you know, after Spurs talking about the wind, he didn't actually blame the wind. He was just, I, he just shouldn't have said it. You know, there, there, there's a time and a place for that. You know, when he's talking about zone 14s after Spurs as well. You know, I said, I think I said to you in the in the pub afterwards that. He's not again. He's not technically wrong, but you don't say that in a post-match interview. You say that in a in a tactics room afterwards when you're analysing the game with the players. You don't, you know, it's it. so there's that. But other than that, I I think he's been pretty spot on. You know, I know some fans got you know a bit annoyed when he threw the players under the bus. I think when he came out after 
can't remember, was it Everton or um, Arsenal where he said the players mm. weren't getting it or the players weren't understanding what he was trying to do or so what I can't remember exactly what it was. It might have been but, Leicester. Mm. But there's a, there's there's a way there's a difference between play, throwing players under the bus and kind of speaking the truth. He's there to talk about when you lose a game or draw a game or when something's happened that you don't win and someone kind of says to you what went wrong. He's just being honest, isn't he? Is it just saying like well, if the players had done what I've asked or what we've been coaching or what we've been training, then we wouldn't be in this position. And a lot of our goals that we've conceded have come through mistakes. You know, that's their, that's, that's their mistakes. And you can turn around and say, you know, we, we can think it back to Casey. You know, maybe Casey took it up on his shoulders, this, that and the other. But, and, and, and the book does stop his skin, of course it does. But we're still in this transitional period where the players are learning something Skinner wants, and, and he's trying to get out there. He's trying to say, Look, this is what I'm trying to do. Some players are getting it, some players aren't. And I yeah, think that's going to be reflected in, in, in the starting 11 as well. But he's not just going to turn around and say, Oh, well, I haven't told them to do this. This is all my fault. When he obviously has, he, he knows what's yeah. going wrong. It's like you started the show, Connie. You said, and I thoroughly agree with it, he, he does know his tactics. Arguably, he knows too much for. Players who may not have even been full time for more than four years, you know, he does know his tactics. I, I think let's find that balance in there. No, I was just going to say as well. I think as well, a lot of his press conferences are like targeted. I think that he's very not clever as well. I don't know. I think that is the right way of saying it. Clever in terms of you know when he's talking about investment, you know who that's aimed at. I think yeah. when he's talking about certain players not following what he said. He knows what he's doing because he knows the players will see that. Now, it's a ruthless way of managing because there's some managers that will do everything to protect. Ollie was one of them where he'd he'd constantly back the players no matter what and say, you know, it wasn't you know good enough and all that. He'd never, ever say it was the players, but Skinner's the first man. I actually like it because at the end of the day, once the players cross that white line, it's on them. If, you know... If tactically, if we'd been tactically outclassed in these games, you could go, right, okay, you know, that's... Yeah, fair enough. That's on Skinner. What are we doing? But we haven't. We've, like you said, so we've lost. We've lost two games a season. I can hear myself. That's a big echo here, John. You're okay. But, oh no, we're good. Um, yeah, no. So we've lost two games a season. Arsenal. I mean, that's Arsenal. I actually think we played quite well in that game. You know, Chelsea was a one-off because we were three down after 15 minutes or whatever it was, and every single one of those were poor passing out from the back errors. So you can't, you know, with those two. Tottenham was a late free kick. There wasn't a free kick. I mean, and it should have been defended anyway. Everton was a mix-up with a goalkeeper and the centre-back. So that's, you know, you're looking. Take those two. I say it all the time. Take those two draws. That's four points. Table looks different. I think it's just, it's it was always going to take time. Skinner in interviews, yes, it can rub people up the wrong way. But ultimately, I don't think he's been factually wrong in anything he said. Yeah, I think for me, it comes across as confidence. He's got confidence in his own playing style, his own ability. And it's almost like, and he hasn't made any transfers yet, so he's got that under his belt. You know, I missed an article where I basically uh, turned around and said, "Look, he's not made any, any, um, any signings, so he's still got that trump card, so to speak. He's he's still got time to bring in his own players, and his existing players will know this, and he's confident, so he can turn around and say, "Look, any way he wants to say this, rightly or wrongly, so he can ship players out and bring players in. He's still got time to do that, and we don't want to see that." But what are you saying is, look, if you can't do what I'm asking of you, then somebody out there will. I don't know who that player, who those players are, because I think it takes a very intelligent to play, player to kind of play this style of play. It might be someone European, it might be someone young who's never done it before. I don't know. And with the transfer window coming, it's it's a great time. Um, you are right, he's targeting the board when it comes to transfers. It was great to hear that. We talk about squad depth. We have got players, we have got squad depth, but have we got squad depth with um, the knowledge that can play this game? We don't we don't know this yet. I think from what I have seen in the past month, I think it's great. I think players are getting it. And I still think there's a lot more to go. I, I don't even think we've scratched scratch the surface in some areas yet, which is great. We do need... Um, we, did, we, did, we do need another uh, person who could put the ball in the net. What kind of striker? It, for me, he doesn't need to be an out and out nine, but he does need to be someone who can uh, score goals. It doesn't matter where he comes from, but it does need to be someone who can score yeah. goals. I, Go on, I think the, the, the one thing I'll just uh, just end on, I think you're talking about young players there and new signings. 
they will be easier to bed in because they won't have had a lot of these group of players came from the start and were with Casey and have you know, for a couple of years. So all they've known is her system and the, the kind of group of people, you know, like Toon, Golton, you know, Hanson, Zellum, you know, that core group. So when you're looking at those players, it'll be easier for a new player coming in because they don't have that old way of playing. Um, you know, you'll have and the same with the younger players, they're like sponges, you know, Carrie Jones, she'll come in and just that's all she'll want to learn. So yeah, it will be easier for newer players. And I think that's what I said, you know, I, I repeated all the time that he needs to upset some players, I think, and let some players go, some fan favourites as well, um, and bring his own players in. And then we might see the best of the system. We're coming up to nearly uh, an hour. So I'm just going to kind of summarise um, me very briefly. I'll get his style of play. Um I can see why some fans would get frustrated by it because it's quite slow, but I do think the actual passing will speed up coming with players' confidence. Um, I do think that we'll see wing play every now and again, but I don't think it's going to be plan A. I think if plan A doesn't work, then you might see Galton and Hansen start running the full backs like, like in the old days, but I think that's kind of plan B. I think we need to get better at uh, the final third where we start to uh, find in the space behind You know how we do that. It's down to the players, you know, the, the skiller can t- give, give them ideas, but when they're on the pitch, they need to kind of be on the same wavelength and they need to go from that. Um, media-wise, keep doing what you're doing, I suppose. When you when you lose a game, don't shrug it off. I don't think you will again. I, I think, you know, I think um, you kind of learned the hard way uh, after the Chelsea game. And uh, I can see us going from strength to strength, but it, it won't come overnight. It's, it's a very complex way of playing, but if we nail it, you know, we're going to do some good stuff. Kind of a quick summary from yourself before I wrap up the show. Yeah, I don't have too much to, to disagree with you, to be honest. I think I've understood his system since the first game. I, I, I think, you know, it's been... Uh, we I say it all the time. We all watch football differently. I think for me, it's, it is it is complicated. I, I, you know, I don't claim to be an expert on it. I think I kind of understand it. <laughs> um, like I said, I think the Birmingham goals are, are exactly what he wants to do. So, you know, go and watch that if you can't remember those goals, the, the, the Leah and Ella ones. The, the, I think they're pinnacle of, of what Skinner's trying to do. It's going to take time. We're not there yet. I think we're going to have a few more bumps before we before we end the season for sure. And I think that's the that's the key thing to take away is now I think when we – Skinner talks about something going to sound like Skinner here. We need to keep a level head. When we win, let's not go so high. And when we lose, let's not go so low. Or not even lose, draw. Let's not drop so much because – at the end of the day, it's, it, oh, I hate saying this, but like trust in the trust in the process. Let's see where we are after he's got his own play. If if he gets his own players and you know it, we start seeing a different style, the style he wants, and it's not working, then fine, we can start turning our attention elsewhere. But let's see him get his own players in, give him a bit more time, and I'm 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 confident. You know, I said it in the comments on someone else's show the other day that I reckon Skinner Ball will get us close to the title within three years. 100% mate, 100%. I love Skinner Ball. I hated Skinner Ball at the start because people are slagging it off. Now, I'm going to use it myself because I think Skinner Ball is going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, Connor, I could, I could talk enough for another hour. I really could. Happy New Year. Thank you for coming on. Um, it is a Skinner special, January the 1st. You know, we have to start it off talking about our manager. We've got um, a very good show coming up on Monday with... I'm not going to say who it is just yet, just in case it doesn't happen, but it, it, it should happen. So please tune in to the Monday show. I'm going to, that's going to be exciting. Let's put, this, put, let's put it this way. Transfer season has definitely started with it being January. Um, thank you again, Connor. Connor, leave us some comments and um, we shall see you again soon.